Welcome to Mintel's Little Conversation podcast. Welcome to another episode of Mintel's Little Conversation, where our experts bring you fresh ideas and new perspectives on how consumers eat, drink, shop, groom and think. I'm Andrew Davidson, SVP and Chief Insights Officer of Compare Media, based in New York. And today we're going to be talking about podcasts and how podcasts are evolving as a marketing channel. Joining me to discuss this topic, I have Laura Zima and Jeanette Ornelas in Chicago and Simon, Simon Moriarty in London. Welcome to the pod. Hello. Thank you. Hello. I agree to be here. Um, okay. Well, just if you could just give yourselves a brief introduction, uh, just tell us about your areas of expertise and how long you've been at Mintel. Hi, my name is Laura Zemer. I'm the director of Insights for Compromedia Omni. I've been at uh, Mintel for almost two years. And I focus on omni-channel strategy and digital strategy, which uh, includes podcasts. Excellent. And hi, I'm Jeanette Ornelas, and I've been at Mintel for nearly five years across our reports and Compromedia Insights teams. And I currently support the Compromedia Omni team with Laura, um, and I specialize in social media and influencer marketing. Hello, I'm Simon Moriarty. I'm Director of Consumer Trends for Mintel in uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa, based in our London office. Um, and this week actually is the 13th anniversary uh, of when I started at Mintel. Excellent. Well, congratulations. Um, all right, well, let's start with some context. So um, how big is podcasting now as a medium, as a channel? Um, so help us understand how important this channel is as part of the media mix. Well, we know that um, at least in 2019, there was about an estimated 14 million Americans that are weekly podcast listeners, um, which if you compare that to 2018, that's a 23% increase. Uh, So I think it's important to note that, you know, it is very much exponentially growing in terms of um, listening base. uh, And more than half of people in the United States have listened to a podcast. Uh, And so I think in terms of, you know, what role is playing in the media mix, it's really understanding how much it's growing in recent years in particular and, and how that's going to continue to grow and how that'll shape the media mix in general. Yeah, from the UK point of view, it's similar. It's it's still a relatively small um, medium in the UK. It's still, I think, relatively small numbers of people are regular listeners to podcasts. Um, but what we are seeing is, is since we did research over the last 12 months, we're seeing how people's habits were changing and growing. And I think the impact of COVID-19 will, sh- will mean that more and more people will start listening to podcasts more regularly and that will then carry on uh, once the pandemic is over, which will have a bigger, longer term impact um, on, the, on the size of the market. Mm. Do, you, do you all listen to podcasts? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's a lot friend? at the moment. A lot at the moment, yes. Uh, what's your, I've got to ask everyone what their favorite podcast is. You willing to I'll share? I'll start. Um, I, I mean, I listen to a lot of different types of podcasts. Other than the mental depending. little conversation, of course. Uh, obviously. Um, I, I mean, I have one for like every mood, every, you know, theme. I, but one that I recently discovered um, that I've become a fan of is called Small Doses. Uh, it's with comedian Amanda Seals, uh, and, it, and it's all kinds of just everyday topics. Um, she kind of gives her, you know, truth to whatever the topic is, um, and her style is just very engaging. And because she has a comedic background, I think her delivery um, is really unique. Um, even in some of the advertisements she delivers, she'll do like she'll make it a jingle or like a song. She'll sing it um, as opposed to just more traditional readings. Um, really enjoy that podcast it's a newer one that i've gotten into hmm. interesting any others um i i listen to uh like jeanette it's important to have a variety so i you know there's some for news some for entertainment uh one that i really enjoy is the dollop with dave anthony and gareth reynolds and it's a it's a history podcast where uh one host will pick a topic and describe an event that happened in history and the other host doesn't know anything that or what it's going to be about so it's usually some very Um, You know, there's some sort of caper or just really silliness about something that happened and it just continues to escalate and they do riffs and stuff like that. So you learn something, but you have a lot of fun too. Excellent. And uh, yeah, I I think I'm slightly different to uh, my colleagues in Chicago in that I don't have a wide variety of of podcasts I listen to. Um, And they tend to be around the same subject. So focusing on um, primarily on comedy podcasts. Um, but there's a couple of, of um, 
relatively successful, quite big uh, listenerships in the UK, one called um, Off Menu, which is hosted by two comedians, um, James A. Castor and Ed Gamble, who I'm sure are not household names in Chicago. Um, and they, they invite special guests, um, so different comedians, different uh, people from the, the arts to come and talk about their favorite meal and telling stories about the, the different ingredients, the different experiences, whether it's a meal from their childhood or something that's a kind of a dream meal that they've never experienced. And it's, it's just interesting, I think, to listen to people that you might know from one world talking about something that's much more familiar to you. So something like cooking, um, your favorite food is something that everyone can have that conversation about. So it's quite nice to hear kind of people from the worlds of comedy and music talking about everyday things. Oh, yeah, I, guess, I mean, I guess there are only so many uh, podcasts you can listen to in a day and we all have our certain set times of when we might actually listen to a podcast. I mean, for me, it's like when I go for a run or before the COVID-19 crisis, as I was commuting to work, for example. Mine's the daily, which of course I'm not alone. There's like, I don't know, millions of people across the united states listening to the new york times the daily uh with a couple of others also thrown in but i mean it's it's interesting but i mean obviously now you know obviously with covid the, with the covid-19 crisis a lot of people turn to these types of um you know to other types of media that got more time on their hands but a podcast was growing as as you both were referring to you know before this it's been growing um you know why has it become so popular well, i think if you're looking from a kind of consumer lifestyles point of view, um, what we've seen from the trends point of view over the last couple of years is that there is a real demand for products and services that help people relax because stress has become such a kind of uh, hot topic over the last couple of years um, as having direct impact on people's health and well-being and things like mental health, uh, emotional well-being are becoming really important to lots more consumers. So I think podcasts have played a really crucial role in that because they're not just a way for people to get information that there obviously is that uh, but they also feed into this wider trend where people can just slow down and stop and just have someone or a group of people talking uh, in the background that you know podcast for a lot of the time it's, it's you're not listening to every single word that's being said um, often there's the kind of the comfort of hearing familiar voices uh, there's the familiarity of, of hearing uh, those voices um, and kind of tuning in and tuning out when you need and that that does talk to some of the broader trends that we we've seen uh, where people are looking for things like comfort um, nostalgia uh, and I think in general that ability that demand to slow down to relax to kind of spend time being a bit more mindful and audio mm. stimulus uh, of any kind but podcast as a growing medium plays a really important role in that yeah, I mean, there definitely is a very sort of personal, I mean, it's as personal as it can get in, in, in some ways, and you've selected this topic that you want to listen to, and you've got this uh, very sort of personal experience. Um, so obviously, when you, with a growing medium like this, you know, obviously, we should see advertisers gravitating towards it. We do see advertisers gravitating towards it. Maybe it's not um, being utilized at the, the extent that it perhaps should be, given how, how popular it is it's become uh, as a channel. But let's, so let's talk about podcast advertising in particular. Um, you know, what are some of the options when it comes to podcast advertising? How, how are brands embracing the channel? Right. Well, so I think, um, you know, what we've talked about in terms of how consumers are embracing the channel, uh, they very loyal listeners. So we talked about, you know, Andrew, you're listening to the daily every morning as a part of your routine as, a, as are millions of others. And then you have smaller, more niche podcasts where the base is smaller, but the engagement is extremely high because it's a topic that they're passionate about. So when you think about consumers have raised their hand and said, I'm interested in this topic or I'm loyal to this, I'm going to be tuning in every day, once a week, whatever the frequency may be, advertisers can have this really captive audience. Now you could make the argument there is the skip feature, but in the same way that advertisers have figured out how to work with things like ad blockers and things like that in the digital space, there are many ways to um, consider that as you're building your podcast ad strategy. So certainly I would say the podcast ads where it's just, um, you know, read like a straight radio spot, maybe even as a, re a recut of a radio or TV spot, those tend to be less successful and people do skip over those. Where mm -hmm. we see us is if you really 
tap into the host potential and work with them on a custom read. So things like an endorsement, um, any type of direct response. So often if you're listening to a podcast, you'll hear that they say a custom URL or they offer a discount code. So in this way, as marketers, you can track the effectiveness of one particular podcast or in a podcast network and how that's contributing to your ad sales. And in fact, we've seen some major brands um, move a lot of money towards this since the start of 2020 as a part of their um, either mass media strategy or their mid funneling mm. strategy. Um, that's interesting. I would also Two, COVID-19, um, really when you think about it, you're just typing up copy and it's something that someone reads. So you think about the ability to get something in market very quickly and respond. Um, this is a channel where in the last couple of weeks, we've heard a lot of COVID-19 response ads from big brands saying what they're going to do because they didn't have to shoot a video or redo all their creative. It's just copy that they can give the host to read. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, those host read ads. I mean, I think about my own behavior. If I'm watching a video, you know, you get the pre-roll video and you get the opportunity to skip the ad. But if I'm listening to a podcast and the host reading ad, I, I'm not even trying or even thinking about skipping. They've, they've got me uh, uh, fully engaged. I know that one thing very exciting here for us at Mintel and at Compare Media is that we have um, recently added podcast ads to Compare Media Omni. So Compare Media, for the listeners that aren't aware, Compare Media Omni tracks multiple channels of marketing. Uh, and now we've added podcasts, which is uh, interesting, very exciting. And we now have a couple of podcast ads, which we can play you. Yes, very excited. So I've pulled a couple examples and I'm really excited to, I uh, didn't share the audio ahead of time. I want to hear uh, what my colleagues think about um, the strategies that uh, a few of these advertisers took with these podcast ads. So the first one we'll play is from my favorite podcast, The Dollop. And we are also brought to you in part by Stamps.com. You guys know I love, I use Stamps.com. That's how I send out all the rewards from the Patreon. If you haven't put your address in, send it to me in a message. You know that. Uh, so you can avoid the post office. That's the best thing. Who wants to go to the post office? Especially now. Stay in your house. Uh, Stamps.com is perfect for staying in your house. <laughs> <laughs> <Thoughts. laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's the kind of advertising that works for me. It's when the host is actually kind of riffing on the, the advert. They're adding their own personality into it. Um, I mean, I don't know who the host is or what the company that he was advertising is, but it, it, it's not something that I would have skipped through because I was like, oh, this is an advert. I need to get to the main body of the, the podcast. That was, you know, that was quite easy to listen to and either ignore or, or think about later. I think that kind of thing works because it's less obvious to this advertising I think yeah and I would say, I mean I think I'm gonna stereotype myself as a typical millennial but um as someone who doesn't send out a lot of mail I have found myself asked wondering wait where do I get stamps <laughs> so <laughs> um now that's very effective in terms of targeting for me because stamps.com sounds like a ideal way for me to get stamps as opposed to going to buy them out in the store somewhere especially right now um yeah I think that's really effective and I think, you know, because the host is reading it, you almost wonder, how is he going, you know, what's he going to say? You're kind of almost wondering, where is he going to, where is he going to take it? And like you, like you say, Simon, you're sort of fully engaged and listening. You're not thinking, um, you know, can I, can I skip over this? Although, obviously, if they were to sort of pick something that's so irrelevant, I mean, there's obviously, there's the, having the right product and the right match with the host is key because they obviously reading out something that was sort of, I guess, went against their values or where it went against who they are as a person, then you'd start to say, hang on a second, this is just pure, um, you know, commercialism. But uh, yeah, no, very interesting. Right. And that's something that you can do uh, with targeting strategies. A lot of these networks will say, hey, these are the, the shows that we have that align with your audience base, almost the same way that um, marketers would plan TV. So in this case, we had something that, you know, as Simon said, he's allowed to riff. They probably gave him an outline and he took it where he wanted it to. Um, he's talking about stamps.com, which is um, a product here. Um, that you can buy postage instead of going to our postal service. And then he's working in current events too. So this whole idea that 
it's the time of COVID-19. We're supposed to be practicing social distancing. He's telling everybody to stay in their house. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's interesting actually going back to the riffing part. Of course, there is some element of risk for the brand, right? I mean, if the, if the host riffs on it and takes it in a certain direction, so they've got to be comfortable sort of giving away or letting, letting, that, letting them have that freedom. All right. So, we, so I think you've got another example, right? I do have another example, and this is from uh, Andrew's favorite podcast, The Daily. So I'll play that one for everyone and we can see what we think. There's a new kind of credit card created by Apple. It's called Apple Card, and it lives in your wallet app and in your wallet. You can buy things with Apple Pay or a laser-etched titanium card. It sets a whole new level for privacy and security, and it gives you daily cash back with every purchase. Oh, and you can apply in minutes. Just open the wallet app on your iPhone and tap the plus button to get started. To learn more, check out apple.co slash getapplecard. Available for qualifying applicants in the United States. Issued by Goldman Sachs Bank USA, Salt Lake City branch. All right, so a little bit of a different strategy there. What did people think? Uh, I mean, I don't, it, it's not as effective for me as, you know, the past example, uh, partly the host isn't reading it. Um, but then also, I mean, funny enough, I, I feel like if they were going to have it not be read by the host, it'd be more effective if it was read by Siri, but that's just, <laughs> I think. Um, <laughs> Yes. Oh, very fun idea. <laughs> A voice we all know, at least Apple users. <laughs> yeah. I think that the voice for, for me there, I mean, I switched off as soon as the advert started. Um, <laughs> I, there was just, because it, it feels like an advert. It feels mm-hmm. like it's interrupting what you intend to do with mm-hmm. your own time. And especially with uh, streaming of, of music and podcasts, you're, you're, able to stream stuff whenever you want it. So you're choosing the specific time out of your daily routine to actually listen to this thing. And I think advertising that feels like it's interrupting that is naturally going to make you feel kind of not necessarily anti the brand, but just anti the advert itself. So maybe losing some of that engagement. Interesting. I mean, I, I thought it was interesting that they were tackling, you know, obviously it's a, it's a credit card, it's a financial services product. And, you know, even at the end, they had to sort of put in a couple of sort of, le- it wasn't exactly legal language, but there were some, some, some details that you probably didn't need to, you know, from a consumer's perspective, were a little bit too, too, too overwhelming. Although I, I think that there, if you, it was a simple enough message, they were, were giving a clear call to action. If you were interested, you would have remembered that you could, you know, go to that website or just click the link in the Apple wallet. Um, I think obviously Apple has a simple enough uh, approach that it can perhaps do that. Other financial services products might be a little bit more complicated. Um, But uh, yeah, definitely uh, an interesting one. Yeah, the call to action is good, but I think we can't underestimate or undervalue the impact of the host. Um, One one concept that Jeanette, Jeanette and I have talked about a lot is just this idea that the hosts really do, you know, they have these very loyal communities and in the sense that they interact with people Mm. outside the pod. So they all have their own social, many have their own websites, they do live shows. So in a sense, they are just as much an influencer as someone who, um, you know, is an influencer on Instagram or YouTube. Yeah. So it's really, when you get the host reading it, you're really tapping into this, this idea that you've talked about, this whole idea of audio influencers. I mean, that's effective. I think for a lot of people, it's the the host or the hosts are the reason why they choose that podcast in the first place. It's not necessarily the subject matter that is being covered. Um, it's because it is being this entertainment or it's information that's been provided by someone that you have been influenced by before, whether you've watched them do stand up on TV or whether you've, you've heard them talk in an interview. It's kind of, that's what drives you to a podcast, I think, rather than the subject matter. So maintaining that relationship i think throughout the podcast with the host is important and having i think as you said that just improves that engagement with the host actually becoming part of the advertising within the podcast this is another layer of, of kind of recognition i think that works yeah. I think that well, I think those were two really good examples. So thanks for sharing those with us Laura. Two great examples about how of how marketers are leveraging podcasts as an advertising channel. And it touches on a whole range of different themes. But, you know, when we, you know, what, you know, podcast trends, I mean, we look to the start looking to the future, what, what podcast trends should marketers be aware of then as we, as they start to dig in and get more engaged with this channel? I, th- I think we have to look at it too, from not just how do I engage with podcast listeners, but um, from the whole like media landscape point of view, you know, we are in this attention economy where we're constantly overstimulated 
Um, I think, you know, the impacts of COVID-19 in particular and how much screen time has gone up um, and just how much time people are um, spending consuming media content is really going to play a role in, in what the next, you know, several months look like. Um, so really, I feel like we need more passive modes of engagement, which I think someone brought up earlier, the, the like the wellness aspect of listening to a podcast as opposed to other forms of media. Um, and so when we think about why people listen to podcasts, um, I think, you know, the, the fact that the trust that these hosts can develop is something that most brands can really only aspire to, which is what the big appeal is for advertising on these platforms. And even too, and how we think about how people discover new podcasts that's evolving as well with, you know, different social media extensions and things like that. I mean, I'm a big Spotify user. Um, I, even though I love Spotify for my music streaming, I hadn't always listened to podcasts on Spotify once they rolled them out. I was an Apple podcast user. Um, but given that with, you know, the Instagram extension, people regularly can share, this is the podcast I'm listening to. This is a song I'm listening to. Um, I've started to screenshot those sometimes like, Ooh, that looks like a good episode or a good podcast. I want to check out later. Um, granted because I am a Spotify user, the, you know, the UX is ideal for me. I can click and be directed to it on Spotify, bookmark it, save it, you know, what have you. Uh, well, if I'm not a Spotify user, that kind of cuts off, um, you know, the capability for me to be directed to it, um, right away. But I think it, it's just a matter too, of just how much content people are consuming across platforms. So it's not, you know, I'm just going to listen to this podcast and, and that's the end of my interaction, um, to the point earlier about them being kind of influencers in their own right, you know, listening to their podcast, you're probably maybe also following them on social media, um, you know, we have research that shows that about a quarter of millennials listen to podcasts of influencers they follow. Um, so I think understanding too, not just the power of the hosts um, for many podcasts, but then the uh, guests that they have on their podcasts. Um, I mean, Dr. Fauci right now is like a hot guest on a lot of different podcasts and people are tuning in. Like I'm a Barstool Sports listener and I listen to their podcast with Dr. Fauci. Um, so I think the appeal of having the right guests can really draw wider audiences than you typically have as well sure what it said okay and so simon thinking about the future any anything podcast trends that listeners should be aware of yeah i think it's kind of following up from Jeanette's point um this, this the changing role of influencers will have naturally have an impact on all types of media and i think podcasts are in a good position to to really go from strength to strength i mean we did some research last year in the uk um just less than a year ago and um, word of mouth um, so recommendations from friends and colleagues was significantly the most or the highest reason why people choose to listen to a podcast um, far above um, they've just seen it on something like Spotify or they've seen it talked about on TV and uh, video and I think as more and more people listen to more and more podcasts particularly over in the, the last couple of months uh, in different regions and going forward um, there's going to be more word of mouth generated mm. uh, but, I, but I think brands and organizations and advertisers need to be aware of is that we're actually in, a, in quite a unique position now where there's been a lot of content and a lot of podcasts have been created, have been up and running for a number of years in lots of cases or are new and have kind of seen a significant bump in audience uh, because they've hit a sweet spot of what people are interested in. But actually because a lot of people who work in the entertainment industry or if not the majority of those people are having to find different ways to kind of get their um, their act out there, if you like, to get their voice out there. There's lots more people um, who previously maybe wouldn't have thought of podcasts are using podcasts as a way to stay in touch with their fans, with their audiences, while they can't record new television shows, while they can't record live events, while they can't do live stand-up gigs, for example. So I think what advertisers need to be wary of is is kind of hitting a, a tipping point of just having simply too much content having too many things for people to try and choose between um and often as well we're seeing the same person will host multiple podcasts with different themes um so there is a risk that they kind of get burnt uh, there's kind of podcast burnout i guess where there's simply too much choice um and i think podcasts because they're easy to make and they're easy to get out to people there is that risk that everyone will just start doing it because it's a it's a, a quick and easy way to kind of get mm. with an audience um and i think that's when people 
going back to that point of people making a choice to listen to something, if they feel that that choice is being hampered by by having too much information, too much choice, if you're choosing to listen to something in, in order to relax and unwind, but it's difficult to find that because there's so much noise and clutter that kind of does the opposite of what you're supposed to be feeling when you're engaging with a podcast. So that, I think that's a trend, maybe a slightly more negative trend to, to, to be aware of. Right. And I would say so to uh, Simon and Andrew points that you've made, um, there are, because podcasters, they take their content very seriously, there's speculation that some networks may go private and set up subscription models the way that we see with some streaming platforms. So this idea that I don't want to be beholden to advertisers. Initially, this space was very much um, advertising with DTC brands, other things that were startups. So it was very much community helping community. Now, if you're listening to podcasts, it's you know, a, a true crime podcast that I've been listening to for five years now has ads for McDonald's on it. So there is some speculation that not necessarily across the board because podcasts are, you know, free um, in large part for everybody, but that some networks might take themselves private and remove advertising altogether and just try to get a subscription from their loyal base. Okay, so we're, we're almost out of time. I do want to ask you just one last question. You know, do, I mean, do you have any tips or recommendations for brands and advertisers when they're thinking about, you know, whether they should get into podcast advertising or how they should adapt their strategies uh, within the podcast advertising space? You have to be comfortable riffing on your ad copy. Give them some flexibility. Make sure you're aligning with the podcast that is in line with your brand's identity and your brand's ideals. You know, as, as Simon was saying earlier, this is really a moment or a channel of levity for people, some escapism. So if you can embrace that and have um, fun with the way that you present your advertising, the channel can be successful for you. Yeah, and I would add that um, in terms of just the media capabilities, we are seeing technology come out that's really going to potentially disrupt how you even serve these advertisements. Whereas now every listener is hearing these same ads, uh, you know, on whatever podcast you're listening to. Spotify um, earlier this year introduced their own uh, podcast ads. Um, and so they're, they're calling this technology that they have streaming ad insertion. So basically um, in real time, it'll choose which ads you're served as the listener based on what they know about you, about where you're located, what type of device you're using, your age, similarly to, you know, how you would serve other problematic type ads. Um, and so I think with that, it's, it's really going to mean that the two different people could be listening to the same exact podcast, but have very targeted advertisements served to them, which would ideally create um, a more personalized experience, which, you know, deters you from skipping ahead or feeling like it was very, um, you know, interruptive of, of what you were listening to yeah no, i'd agree i think with the tone of voice i think has never been more important um particularly with so many people utilizing podcasts as that sort of source of comfort and reassurance um if they're isolated if they're they're on their own um for a longer period of time than they would normally be if they're not able to go out and see friends and family and so on i think we're seeing a real shift in advertising tone of voice and messaging there's a real shift towards brands making it clear how much they care about their customers how much they're trying to help their consumers through a difficult challenging period of time and i think that's something for advertisers to bear in mind that as this goes on for for several months we as consumers get used to how brands talk to us um and i think when this kind of crisis is over and people will still continue to listen to podcasts just maybe in different environments different situations i think it's important for brands not to forget the tone of voice that they carried through that period of crisis and, and still talk to their customers as, as if, if they care mm. about them i think that's a ni nice uh, nice way to end it all right well thank you laura thank you simon thank you jeanette um thank you everybody for listening of course the best podcast of all is the Mintel Little Conversation. Make sure you subscribe, rate and review on Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud or any other platform you get your podcast from. Uh, this is season two, so spread the word and we'll catch you next week for a new episode of Little Conversation. If you want to know more about Mintel, who we are, what we do, head over to mintel.com and follow us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and check out our blog for even more insights from our analysts. Thank you. Thank you.